This is the Weather Extreme video for Tuesday morning, the 3rd of April. I'm James Spann. Got some unsettled weather for the rest of this week, at least through Thursday. And ooh, all of a sudden, the idea of a cold snap is back on the table next week. Yes, it is. Let's go in there and take a look. Some of the sky cam shots around the network this morning. There's the uh, Birmingham sky cam from atop the Daniel building looking north. Things are calm for now. Let's look at downtown Haleyville in Winston County in northwest Alabama and way down south. That's our Gulf Shore sky cam where they actually had some big storms blowing through there during the pre-dawn hours, but that's passed on to the east. All right, got the upper low over New Mexico, and we've got that uh, uh, impulse rotating around that, producing the convection on the Gulf Coast this morning. And there's the radar at 5 o'clock, and you can see how Gulf Shores is kind of in between those rain areas. Uh, but pretty strong storms are rolling down Interstate 10 in the Florida Panhandle, uh, moving toward Crestview. Uh, big storms down there in the Gulf, but as you work your way north, things are pretty quiet, at least for now. Temperatures, look at the warm surge coming up through the uh, Midwest, but it's cold in the northeast and cold out west. Check out the watch warning map. It's pretty quiet. I mean, you know, this is the anniversary of the super outbreak of tornadoes in 1974. Uh, typically a very active time of the year, but at least for now, just a few little scattered minor issues around the nation. There's the severe weather potential later today. Got slight risk areas to the west and north. Some of the cities involved in those would be Dallas, Fort Worth, Tulsa, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Louisville, St. Louis. But on the probabilities, the 5% range covers all of Alabama. And we could see a few storms later today in this evening. The main risk would be from hail and, and strong straight line winds. The tornado threat seems very low. Really the same thing tomorrow. We've got a slight risk defined for about the western half of the state. But truth is, anybody could see a strong storm uh, tomorrow or tomorrow night. Hail, strong straight line winds, the main risk, the tornado threat is low. And on day three, which is Thursday, again, the 5% probabilities for about the southern two-thirds of Alabama. So uh, considering the time of the year, we'll have to watch the radar carefully, but it seems like on the surface the tornado threat is just not a big deal for now. But we certainly could see some storms with hail, kind of like we saw Saturday. And there's the rain for the next five days. Valid through Saturday evening at 7 o'clock, suggesting rain amounts of about one inch, but... You know, with this type of pattern, uh, one individual storm could drop one inch of rain. Uh, we'll probably see a few isolated spots with over two inches here, but most spots, I'd say one inch on average is a pretty good number. All right, let's look at the modeling. This is the OZGFS at 1 o'clock today. There's the upper low coming into the Texas Panhandle. And down below that, we'll have a chance of showers and storms this afternoon and this evening, mostly driven by the daytime heating process, helped along by maybe some leftover boundaries from that MCS that was over Mississippi yesterday. And before the storms arrive, uh, we'll probably see low to mid-80s today. All right, tomorrow the upper low is just drifting east. Down below that, same deal. Uh, cloudy at times, showers and storms around. Maybe some in the morning, better chance in the afternoon and tomorrow night. And on Thursday, the upper low uh, begins to open up. It's over northern Arkansas. And again, showers and thunderstorms are likely on Thursday. High around 80, something like that. And uh, we'll watch out for stronger storms with the main risk coming from hail and straight line winds. Friday, things calm down. As everything moves on to the east, we turn cooler. As the thickness values come down, this is suggesting a high in the uh, mid-70s. Maybe some sunshine breaking through. And again, the weekend just looks great. There's Saturday. Easter uh, weekend kicks off with a sunny day. We'll start the morning in the low and mid-50s. The high should be in the middle 70s. And Easter Sunday, got a weak front north of us, maybe squeezing out a shower around Nashville or Dallas, but again, I don't think it'll bother us. Partly to mostly sunny on Sunday with a high in the upper 70s, just gorgeous. It's Monday of next week, evidence of the stall front may be kind of producing a shower or two. We'll mention some risk of scattered showers, and ooh, look at Tuesday of next week, a week from today. Look what's on the table again. A deep upper trough over the east. Down below that, look at the cold air coming down the pike. 540 line, almost down to uh, North Alabama. And then the following day, this is Wednesday the 11th. By golly, we've got that cold high over Little Rock, and that would open up the door for a frost threat. You know, I we've been trying to say that there's just climatology. And I, and I know that we had this look before, and it went off the board. And this could go off the board, but... 
it's there. And to make the, the matter more credible, look at the European. This is valid Tuesday evening of next week at 7 o'clock. And it's got the 540 line down to Fort Payne. Very cold air streaming into the east. So all of a sudden, growers, our frost threat is back for the middle of next week. So we'll watch. We'll check the end of the forecast April 18th. The flow goes zonal, and that looks very quiet out there. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog, the next video here by 3.30 or so today. And don't forget to watch us on the news this evening. That's ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren you cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.